One aspect we're going to look at right now is getting pressure against the outside ski. Now, we're going to go for an exercise. It's quite a robust and dynamic exercise. It's like a power plow in a snow plow form. But what you're going to see from the exercise is how the legs really do work independently and how the outside leg makes that commitment to engage on the snow. At different levels you can practice this, but the idea of this is just getting the theory in your head and becoming more aware about how the outside leg should function. The other thing you'll notice quite naturally is that the inside leg softens. Now you can do this in two ways. Sometimes, if you're powerfully working your outside leg, the inside leg naturally becomes soft. But if you want to put a bit of extra awareness in there and you're finding that your inside leg doesn't soften up, just try and think about relaxing it and allowing it to flex. One thing I want you to look at when we're going through this exercise, and whichever pace you take it at, is the height difference between the knees. You can really see when the legs are working independently and that outside leg's extending strong, you're seeing the inside leg, the knee of the inside leg, at a very different height level to the outside knee. And that's what you want to be aiming for, to try and get the exercise to encourage the independent leg action. And the stronger outside leg, the longer outside leg, and the more flexed and relaxed inside leg. You'll be able to see as the movement progresses and the rhythm actually starts to kick in, the skis end up naturally matching parallel. And that's quite an interesting thing because many skiers get caught between plow and parallel and feel like they're parallel skiing but have that slight scar tissue of a sort of a small wedge being created. When the wedge shows itself, it's a real identifier that the new outside leg extension isn't functioning directly down, so not given a good transmission of pressure. Instead, it's diagonally down and out to the side. The power plow gives you time to isolate that movement and learn it correctly, so it's directly down. Be aware of this movement, as a lot of skiers have this wedge. For the majority, it's actually caused from trying to become a parallel skier too quick in your first ever week and actually missing out on all the great foundation you build in your plough development phases. It shows itself when you're put in situations that are a little bit more demanding for you. Um, and this exercise actually helps you find natural parallel because quite often it is that reason that the outside ski and the outside leg extension haven't been activated correctly and therefore some weight is dragging on the inside ski. And to make a pure good connection you need the extra encouragement. So an exercise like this, which is quite, quite dynamic, will put you in that place where you feel much more intensely the outside leg extension. And as we just saw there, at the end of it, with you adding rhythm, you can create very natural parallel turns, complete parallel turns. So that power plow would be a great way to get off the intermediate plateau and get yourself onto advanced skiing levels. For the, for the beginners and people lacking confidence, it would just boost your morale, knowing that that outside leg's gonna extend and support you. And when you're looking towards good carved turns and making linked carved turns, you're always gonna see a good skier having a very early pressure against the new outside ski, and that's all because of a good leg extension. So have a think about developing your power plow. Again, at the snow centre we've got this environment and we say it almost frustratingly, we wish more skiers would come and work on drills and exercises to up their game and this is the perfect environment to do it as you can see. So get out and practice, try and actually get these things done and see what a difference it makes when you just go for your free ski and run just after. Now you've had the chance to try the power plow at the indoor environment and you can see how much it changes your skiing. Um, I've actually come here now to an outdoor environment. We're up on the Zermatt Glacier. As you can see behind me, I've got the Matterhorn, which is as spectacular as the Matterhorn is. Very motivating to be skiing at this sort of altitude. I'm right up to almost 3,900 meters here in Zermatt. Um, because you've got the altitude here, I'm actually here in August, and I'm standing on perfectly groomed pistes. It's good all year round. It's obviously spectacular in the winter, but in the summer, it's the guaranteed glacier to ski. We're gonna use one of the slopes behind me to develop an area of the power plow. Now, the thing I wanna talk about is that part of skiing where you may be told by your coach, he wants to see more angulation, he wants to see your hip, 
move dynamically more into the turn to tilt those skis onto their edges. But sometimes you get that inner feeling that you don't trust or want to allow your hip to fall into a place we sometimes call no man's land. And the beauty of the power plow is that you've got this kind of almost a stabilizer effect. You've got the wedge shape to allow you to experience what it feels like, to let that hip get inside the turn a little bit earlier and actually reach to try and create angles. Every skier will find that you have a weaker turn direction. And the thing about the power plow, it gives you a chance to not only feel the, the turn that feels confident, but really practice and attack at moving that hip laterally on the turn that lacks confidence. And quite often you can go through quite a few weeks but never find the muscle memory of getting your hip inside the turn. So let's have a look at the power plow and how it can help lateral movement of the hips and confidence with the stabilizer, with the inside ski to still balance against, but allowing you to find dynamics. <laughs>